Hello, everyone, and welcome to the In Demand Majors webinar series. I'm Nikki Smith, and I'm an admissions representative at Northwood University. I'll be your moderator for tonight as we look at the operations and supply chain major, often referred to as OPS. One thing I would like to point out is that you'll have a chance to chat your questions. You will just use the chat box. On YouTube, some people call it the comment box. Whatever you call it, just type your questions throughout and we'll be sure to answer them at the end of our session tonight during our dedicated Q&A session. Before you begin to learn about operations and supply chain at Northwood, I would like to introduce you to our campus director of admissions, Missy DeBoer. She will share with you what makes Northwood a unique place to live and learn. Welcome, Missy. Thank you so much, Nikki. I, it is an absolute pleasure to be here. As Nikki said, my name is Missy DeBoer and I am the Campus Director of Admissions here at Northwood University. We are so excited that you are taking the time to learn more about why Northwood is such a special place and potentially your future home. Your major will describe your specialty and your expertise. And as a Northwood student, you will start experiencing classes in your major your first semester. All Northwood majors feature a common business core. It's this core that really prepares our graduates to be well-rounded leaders in any organization and industry, regardless of the major that they choose. Our faculty are industry experts, and they leverage their business and life experiences to mentor and coach students. Northwood students feel connected and supported both inside and outside of the classroom. There are plenty of opportunities to live, learn, and have fun. We embrace a philosophy called the Northwood idea. We believe in the power of free markets and entrepreneurial leadership to improve society and quality of life for everyone. Northwood students are determined to go make a difference in the communities they live in and the companies that they work for and own. And at Northwood, we value hands-on experience. Our students compete, plan signature events, and pursue internships that add to their personal and professional profiles. You will learn skills you never thought possible because you will be surrounded by students with a similar mindset that are passionate and driven when it comes to their futures in business. Northwood has many majors to choose from, and I'm going to hand it back over to Nikki to take you through some of your choices and the rest of the evening. Tonight, we will look at our operations and supply chain major, but Northwood University has over 20 different business majors. The in-demand webinar series will take place until December 17th, and we'll cover each of these majors. With that, we will dive into our webinar today. The agenda for tonight is that we have three key areas that we'll focus on. First, we'll talk about the major and what makes it unique. Then we will bring in a Northwood alum who will give you a look at what it's like to, to be in the major and afterwards, what kind of job he was able to get. And finally, we'll wrap it up with the next steps. Without further ado, I would like to introduce you to Professor Henschel. Good evening. I've been uh, Good with- evening. I've been with Northwood for 13 years now, and uh, nine years ago, we kicked off our first um, class in this major, and uh, it's consistently grown. We currently have over 90 students in the major, and uh, the industry outlook continues to be really solid. Um, in 2016, there was an article that... Uh, mentioned that there were six openings for every graduate in the program. So many companies are trying to create their own uh, pathway into operations supply chain management by just training their existing employees to, to do the work. Um, so even during the challenging economic times of uh, 2020, our graduates are still finding that they not only have job offers, they have multiple opportunities and they're just trying to figure out what to do um, that best fits with their personality and interests. Um, they expect job opportunities to increase by 20% over 2019 in the coming year. And we're seeing that with, with our students. Um, the salary is 
very solid as you progress through the career. Um, there's very little data on starting salaries because there's such a, a, a diverse number of opportunities. But it, in a recent um, ASCM survey, they found the median salary uh, across um, several hundred people was over $74,000. That doesn't mean much, um, but it, it tells you there is opportunity. Now, um, what's happening in our industry is these positions are very much available because most employees uh, end up saving their company more money than they cost their company to have them employed. And so we aren't really looked at in this industry as much of an expense. Um, if you're an expense, you're probably not doing your job very well. But uh, the other thing we're seeing is that people from the operations and uh, supply chain management background are the ones that are heading up um, these future degree or, or management positions, advanced positions in, in organizations. And I think your CFOs, your um, plant managers, your CEOs, your general managers are starting to come more and more from this background. So that's the industry outlook, uh, or at least a brief overview of it. Now, what makes our program unique is that our degree makes you process oriented and capable of uh, process improvements and every organization needs those. Now, as you deal with that, what we mean is if you're working in an organization and the first thing you're going to be dealing with if there's a problem is trying to map out the process and figuring out your measurables and where your problems are occurring. Um, what this means is you're you're capable of working anywhere in in the supply chain. You're capable of working anywhere in operations. Um, you have the skills to do anything. And so we try and tell our students that uh, um, with this degree, your objective then becomes finding your niche that you just enjoy. Um, so let's just say you know that that it gives you these massive number of career options and and I would say you're broadly capable for jobs in sourcing, operations, logistics, planning, and quality. Um, I have one student right now who's graduating in May. We've had a lot of discussions about what they're going to be doing and, and ultimately the answer for this student was uh, they believe they're going to do well in project management and so that's kind of an overriding theme that every area of the organization needs project management or project managers. So uh, a lot of flexibility. I would say that other programs um, might tend to focus at other institutions on just logistics. And we'd like our, our students to have a much higher ceiling than that. Um, we're currently offering certifications with our, within our program. Um, we have a CPIM. Uh, cert certification and, and my students uh, in our senior course right now have just finished their Lean C Six Sigma semester and their final exam is um, a certification exam for the Lean Six Sigma Green Belt. So we're trying to really help their resumes out, but for the most part between their internships and, um, and their certifications, they seem to be able to speak um, the language pretty well. And uh, they do well in interviews, but more importantly, they do well in their organizations. Um, we have added a data analytics uh, requirement within our degree in the last few years. Um, so now our students come out, many of them, with a minor in data analytics. At a minimum, they've had um, five statistics courses plus a data analytics course and uh, um, between the major and the required courses. So from that perspective, I, I would say that uh, they're, they're much more capable than uh, some of the students they're competing against from other institutions uh, to do their own data analysis and, 
and I think it really helps them um, understand uh, their business better, their operations better, and their measurables a lot better. So um, I would argue that uh, that it's a strong um, major and gives students flexibility. Now, um, within the courses, we we start in a non-COVID year with uh, uh, many plant tours um, and a lot of video feed to show them what things look like in a manufacturing plant. Ideally, we'd like them to get into a work situation even after their freshman year where they can go out and, and get paid to work in an organization and see uh, the supply chain management processes and, and the manufacturing processes. Um, and it really helps them when they get back in the classroom um, have a, a deeper understanding of what we're talking about, what we're working on. And from that perspective, um, I think it, it's, it becomes very experiential oriented. Then um, we put in a lot of case studies, a lot of training exercises, pull in a lot of data sets um, that allow students to work on real industry problems in the classroom. We do a lot of group projects of that effect. Uh, it, it makes us maybe sound a, a little old, um, but our three full-time professors have over 95 years of industry experience. And, uh, and so we're not talking about theoretical things at all um, in class. Now, in addition to that, um, you know, I, I, I think it's important that you understand the, the, the breadth of, of tours that we've given. We've taken students to the GM assembly plant in Bay City. We go over to Home Depot and have them show our students their inventory system and their um, computer-assisted ordering system. We've gone to Trinseo to watch continuous flows, production controls. We've gone to Fabiano Brothers to see their logistics system, which leverages off of some UPS software, and it's, it's very interesting to see. And we've also had uh, guest speakers virtually this fall from Alcoa, Amazon, and Veda. So that's just a, a small taste of uh, some of the things that we do there. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to um, a student uh, who will be introduced. <laughs> Thank you so much, Professor. Again, remember, we'll be bringing him back at the end. So please feel free to use the chat box to ask any questions that you might be thinking of now. Um, it's now my pleasure to introduce you to Riley Olson. Riley is a Northwood alum. He was an operations supply chain major. Welcome, Riley, and take it away. Hello, everybody. My name is Riley Olson. I graduated in May 2019. I am from Southwest Michigan, and I, I came across the uh, OPS major when I was in high school. I wanted to be an engineer. And um, I wanted to go to Northwood, and Northwood does not offer uh, an engineering program. So while meeting with an academic advisor, they recommended supply chain. Uh, at the time, I'd never heard of supply chain, um, but it sounded like everything that I wanted to do. It just wasn't title engineering. Um, so I said, this Northwood seems like a good fit. And uh, I pursued the program and I have not regretted that decision um, at all. Um, in my time at Northwood, I was a very busy student. I was on the men's golf team. I was a resident uh, advisor for a year and I was able to um, get accepted into three different internship programs. Uh, in my time at Northwood, I felt that the OPS courses were by far the most impactful and enjoyable courses I took. Um, Professor Henschel, Professor McCormick, who's not on the call right now, and Professor uh, Brundage are top tier. Uh, they teach you the most important information you need to know, and they do not waste your time with uh, busy work and excess uh, reading that is not going to add value to your education. Um, 
Upon graduating, I accepted a full-time role as an agricultural uh, supply chain manager for Michigan Sugar Company in Bay City, Michigan. Uh, if you're not familiar with Michigan Sugar Company, we produce sugar that is grown in the ground in sugar beets. And in my role, I am responsible for over $200 million in raw materials. I manage inventories for four factories. And um, I've been working in this role for a little over a year and a half. And in my senior year of college, I started with Michigan Sugar as an intern. Um, I was recommended to Michigan Sugar by Professor McCormick and Northwood University. So if it was not for Northwood, I would not be where I am. Um, while I'm still young in my career, I am looking towards my next steps. And ultimately, I hope to become a vice president at the company. And in, in furthering that goal, I will be starting a master's degree next fall. Nikki, you're, Nikki, you're muted. You're muted. <laughs> Two times in a row. Ugh. Now it's time for my favorite part, our Q&A section. Um, thank you so much, Riley. And Riley's going to stay with us. But I'd like to bring back Professor Henschel. And I'm excited that we have another professor, Professor Brundrit, to join him, too. Um, so we're, first, we're going to chat a little bit about the program. And then we're going to begin our questions. So make sure that you're, you're asking them in that chat box if you have any questions. Uh, so let's start. Um, Riley, you mentioned some internships that you did. Can you tell us a little bit more about your internships? Yeah, I'll, I'll touch on my probably my most um, exciting internship that I did. It was the internship I did after my junior year of college. Um, I was able to accept a role in Phoenix, Arizona, working for a company that distributes food. And that company is in the top 10 for food distributors in the United States. It's called Shamrock's Foods Company. And that was my first real world um, corporate setting that I got to work in. And it was just eye opening to see how the business world functions. And the value that I gained from doing an internship in, in a true you know, real world setting was immense. When I came back to school, I had such a greater appreciation for learning and the the time and energy that goes into the classroom. And uh, if I could stress one thing uh, after having done a couple internships was each class that you take at Northwood is, is vital to your education and, and all of them will help you in the business world. Even if it's not OPS related, it's still very important. Wonderful, thank you so much. Um, is there an organization for this major, something extra that they can be involved in? Yeah, I'll, I'll take that question. There's a uh, supply chain organization. It is a uh, affiliate with the uh, APEX, uh, which is the uh, educational arm of the Association of Supply Chain Management. Um, we're actually a university partner uh, with uh, the ASCM and uh, we support the local APEX chapter here in the uh, region, the uh, Saginaw Valley chapter. And uh, we launched this uh, student organization back in uh, 2019. Um, and it's been a uh, resounding success as far as what that organization does uh, for students uh, who belong to that, uh, that team. Great, thank you so much. Um, we did get a question. What type of math is required in this major? Well, I'll take that. Um, we ask that students um, if they haven't had a college algebra type course in high school, we ask them to take that their very first semester. And then we like to get them started in their freshman year in, in their first statistics class. Um, and uh, they will also take a second statistics course where they get into hypothesis testing. And while that sounds a little bit mundane, uh, for <laughs> high school students, what we're able to do in our stats classes is actually show them how this will get used in industry. And they're required to have those two stats classes before they can take the last two and a half years of the OPS major. And we use the statistics 
and then the uh, data analytics to do a course in the major called statistics for quality engineering. We look at process control, process capability, measurement systems. How do you know you have reliable data? We teach a, a designed experiments course senior year where we're trying to help them understand how to improve a process and optimize a process. And uh, uh, we do use a lot of statistical software. We aren't doing math by hand. Um, there is no reason to do math by hand. Um, we're trying to get people to understand how to interpret data and draw conclusions and help companies improve rather than trying to teach you how to do math. So um, I think that's important to recognize as well. You can go further than that with data modeling. I know Riley did that. He took um, multiple analytics courses. I think you completed your minor in that, if my memory serves me correctly. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and I, I, I would actually like Riley to take a shot at that question as well, because I think his perspective would be valuable. Yeah, so I would say the OPS major is mathematically driven in a way but I, I had a lot of friends in the OPS uh, major that were not math people and didn't really like math. Uh, what, what, what you're gonna find if, if you go this route is, yeah, you're gonna do a lot of math, but like Professor Henschel said, you're gonna use technology to do the math. It's not hand, hand and you know, pencil and paper math. It's using Excel to help you understand answers and using other software. Um, so it, it, there is, there is math required, um, but the way it is, is utilized is not um, a traditional math course. Um, so uh, it, it's not completely math driven. And, and I'd like to add one thing to that. Um, you can't walk into very many companies today that um, don't ask you to start making decisions based on data. They don't want you to make start spending money based on a gut feel. And we're trying to really help <laughs> give people the tools um, to, to make good sound decisions uh, from the data that's available. Agreed, 100%. In all my work experience to date, that's true. Great, thank you so much. Here's another question. Um, how do you know that OPS is the right major for you? Uh, I guess I can touch on that since I studied it. Um, <laughs> I, th I think you have to kind of look at yourself and and how you, how you um, first of all how you you view yourself today and how you want to see how you want yourself to be in the future. So I guess an example that might resonate is if you go into a McDonald's and Professor Henschel tells the story. If you go into a McDonald's and you're always looking to see where they could save time and effort to make your sandwich, you might be an OPS major. Or if you're trying to find an easier way to do something, or and that's something, anything or everything in your life, then you might be an OPS major. <laughs> um, if a goal of yours is to try to find ways to do things better, cheaper, um, and in that regard, you know, it might be a good fit for you. Thank you, that was, that was great. Um, I have a question that was called in. Are there any industries that you can't work in if you major in OPS? Todd, do you want to take that one? Yeah, I, I, I can't think of any. Um, <laughs> the, the OPS major um, is so broad that it's applicable to all industries, uh, both here and uh, you know and abroad as well. So it's international. I mean. You can be a buyer, you can be a demand planner, materials planner, master scheduler, scheduler. you could go into quality engineering, uh, sourcing, purchasing, um, operations director, production supervisor, supply chain manager. And, you know, I come from the automotive industry, but uh, these type of roles um, are applicable to, you know, healthcare, um, hospitality. Um, you know, where O'Reilly works, uh, Monitor Sugar, um, you know, they're just not industry specific. They're, they're across all industries. And, uh, 
um, the tools that you'll get from a OPS major. Um, as uh, Doug Henschel was saying, um, are kind of going to be so valuable uh, for you going into a company to make them better, okay, to make them more efficient, to basically pay for your salary no matter what company you're working for. Um, just to add something to that, we just perused LinkedIn, um, and I'm going to read you a quick list of I'll, I'll only do a, a half a dozen of these real quick. Amazon, <laughs> GM, Meyer, Dow Chemical, Lear Automotive, Ryder Logistics, Polaris, Georgia Pacific, Medtronic, Mahindra, Young Fang, Cooper Standard, Casey Jones Plating Company. You know, I mean, the, you can see the the breadth of opportunity there, and. Uh, um, so no, we're not unique to one industry. You don't have to go work in the automotive industry when you grow up if you take this major. <laughs> Wonderful, thank you so much. So are there any majors or minors that really pair well with operations and supply chain? I think there's several. Um, the Depending on the, the amount of analytics you're going to do, uh, one that jumps out is even MIS because acquiring the data is huge. And if you can be efficient at doing that, um, somebody has to be, okay? And, and it, it's, it's a frustrating experience if, if you spend 80% of your time trying to get the data and, and then you're, you're out of time when it comes to do the analysis. So uh, you do have to know your way around databases in, in some instances. It, or you've got to have somebody who can help you access the data. Well, that's that's kind of an extreme one. But then on the other side of it, if, if you double majored in finance, you've got a pretty good opportunity to be a CFO when you grow up. Um, and that would be a really good opportunity for, for a lot of students. Uh, and, you know, we, we highly recommend the data analytics minor. Um, and, and one day that may become uh, uh, something that, that has a major associated with it, but we're not there yet on, on campus. Um, and, you know, to me, those would be the bigger options. Those are the things I see most frequently, but uh, they certainly aren't the only ones that students have paired up with. Great. Todd, what are you Great. seeing? Um, oh, go ahead. Well, I see the MIS as a good uh, a good fit data analytics uh, for sure. Um, those two come to mind uh, pretty darn quickly. You know, other, you know, what you were saying about uh, you know a finance major uh, um, growing up to be kind of like a CFO. Um, those type of positions too can uh, also benefit from our OPS. Uh, you know, our OPS courses, because then you get that perspective um, as well as a uh, financial planner, a CFO, um, knowing how the operational side of it works. But um, I've seen students uh, with just even not general, uh, uh, you know, management majors pairing up with our uh, OPS major. And that seems to be a good fit for them as well as they uh, basically get that first position as being a frontline supervisor. Yeah. And as you said that, I know we had a healthcare management major um, that's done a lot oh. of inventory work in uh, hospitals and things like that. And, and uh, real solid internship from one of the female golfers uh, that uh, was in the major as well. So Great. there, there are some other things that make sense, but it, I would, prefer to tell students find another thing that really interests you because if if there's another major that interests you there's no reason so, you um i just apply. wanted to uh oh am i the, am i breaking up on you guys no you're okay so i just wanted to mention um that um Yeah, we lost her. 
Okay. I don't know how much time we have left. So, um, that's all right. I'm back. back. All right. Potential. <laughs> So I just want to say thank you to everyone for coming. Um, I've learned so much. I think, Riley, I, you're a year out of your job and you're handling how much, did you say? Uh, 200 million, over 200 million. That is just absolutely amazing to me. Mm -hmm. um, so congratulations. I know you worked really hard to get where you are and you've had some great support of some wonderful faculty behind you. And I know that's a big piece of it. So yeah. thank you, Professor Henschel and Professor Brundrit and Riley for coming in tonight. I really appreciate it. But now for everybody else, let's take a look at your next steps. The one thing we would really like you to do if you haven't done so already is schedule a campus visit. We are still doing face-to-face campus visit. So if you would like to come and see our beautiful campus and experience that entrepreneurial spirit firsthand, meet with a student and even a faculty member, please sign up at the link there. We are also doing virtual visits if you do feel more comfortable uh, meeting virtually and then we can do a virtual tour as well. If you are a freshman, I'm sorry, if you are a senior in high school, or a transfer student interested in coming to Northwood in the fall of 2021, please make sure that you go and you apply at northwood.edu apply. And we hope to see you all soon on campus. Thank you so much for an absolutely amazing evening and have a great night. Bye-bye.